In our gardens are hidden hundreds of wild stories that we rarely discover. Great dramas of life and death. Stories about teamwork or looking out for one's own interests. About standing on one's own feet. About doing the impossible. Where mistakes can cost you dearly and life can change in the blink of an eye. But where the most incredible things can also happen. For a year, we find life as it unfolds in our gardens to get close to the secrets of the garden. It is midsummer. It is a seductive season. We're lured outdoors, enchanted by the long evenings. Similarly, the fauna in the garden radiates magic. If we look closely, things are happening all around us as the animals dazzle us with their most miraculous tricks. Especially around water. On the surface, everything looks quiet and peaceful by the garden pond. But little do we know what's going on below the surface. This garden pond has its own little secret. A creature with a magical nickname, Little Dragon. This is the male common newt. This female newt is on the lookout for a male dragon to call her own. She spends most of her time on land, but it's the end of the mating season now. She's slightly larger than normal because she's full of eggs and ready to mate. But first she needs to find an attractive male down here in the depths of the garden pond. She's not particularly colourful, but she's not the one who has to garner attention. Rather, the males have to make an impression on her. She spots an attractive male waggling his tail flirtatiously. During spring, he has undergone a transformation, developing an impressive jagged dorsal and tail crest. It's all part of his mating dress, and it is designed with a single purpose in mind, to attract a female. It's not without reason that they call him the little dragon of the garden pond. And this little dragon is in the mood to mate. So now it's time to turn on the charm. The foreplay is underway. She's not quite convinced yet. It's going to take more than that. He gets in front of her to impress her with an alluring little dance. He shakes his tail as best he can while secreting sex pheromones in her direction. It works like an aphrodisiac on a female newt and gets her hormones flowing. But it's not enough this time. Although he's a passionate little dragon, she wasn't impressed by his dancing. She leaves, and he'll keep on searching. But he should keep an eye out for something other than attractive ladies, because in the air over the garden, a little creature is looking for a water hole to find its next meal.
To this little creature, it looked like the surface of a pond. The water beetle, or great diving beetle, is mistaken since its eyes aren't evolved to recognize trampolines. It may look like a helpless beetle to us, but it may surprise us to learn that underwater, it's one of the most aggressive and voracious predators. But there's nothing for it here, so it takes to its wings again. Plunging into the depths, the diving beetle is agile and powerful. Here, it is in its element. This female's body is full of steroids. They act as poison for the unwary predator, but she has other weapons as well. Up close, it looks strong and sturdy. Its front legs act as claws to grip prey, and its razor-sharp jaws can pierce anything. The diving beetle settles in, patiently waiting for its lunch to show up. Deeper, near the bottom of the pond, the little newt Don Juan is in full swing wooing a new female. He shakes his tail to the next lady in line. Will he get lucky this time? But he hasn't noticed what's floating around at the surface. A newt is probably too big of a mouthful, or is it? The diving beetle is only three centimeters long, but it's greedy and not afraid to go after prey much larger than itself. At the surface, the beetle traps a bubble of air under its elytra, allowing it to breathe underwater and stay submerged for longer periods of time. The male newt puts up a desperate fight for its life. His strength is fading. He doesn't stand a chance against his aggressive and ferocious opponent. The water beetle's venom starts taking effect in his little body. The young newt ends his days as a greedy water beetle's meal. Now it's up to someone else to populate the pond with newt tadpoles. wonderful time of year, where the days seem like they'll never end, animals are awake for much longer. They use our gardens in very different ways. Some as a pantry. Some just stop by now and again. And some are shy, making sure to keep a safe distance. those that settle in miniature towns underneath the roof. A colony of house martins have returned from South Africa and are settling in here. 
the young female Martin has found a suitable place to nest. She's found her first boyfriend, so they're ready to move in together and have a family. Martins typically mate for life. They behave like when they were young, begging for food from their parents. They repeat that behavior when they give each other cuddles and kisses. They use it to affirm one another as they rub beaks and chirp childishly. The young couple have found a nice spot to nest. If everything goes according to plan, they will have hatched at least two clutches of eggs before heading south for the winter. They have to build and set up their first nest together, but that can be hard. Luckily, they can draw inspiration from their neighbors. House martins are social animals that build their nests close together like terraced houses. The location isn't random. It's important that they can find building materials nearby. A couple of hundred meters from the house and the garden, the young couple finds a spot rich in thick mud. They need mud and grass to build their nest. After all, what's more solid than a house made from bricks and mortar? The Martin hardware store is busy. Their neighbors are also out getting supplies. When they've gathered all they can in their beaks, they fly back. They will make upwards of a thousand trips back and forth to retrieve grass and mud. It's lucky that they're too, because constructing a new house always poses unexpected challenges. It takes around two weeks to get their nest ready. Sometimes the male Martin pitches in, but apparently he much prefers to supervise. The Martin's secret trick is to mix the right type of mud in their beaks with their saliva, which is unique. It's important that the mixture gets the right consistency, so the nest sticks to the wall even when the mud thickens and hardens. This is the Martin's cement. The male looks like he wants to contribute after all. Proudly, he has brought back a muddy leaf. Maybe he can find a suitable place for it all on his own. That doesn't look too bad. But the female doesn't appear to agree. There, that's better. Midsummer is synonymous with a flood of light. By the end of June, the sun can be out for up to 18 hours of the day. Suddenly, we have lots of chores to attend to in the garden. We're busy trimming the hedge before midsummer's day and harvesting the first berries of the season. The light is like a tinderbox for photosynthesis, making plants explode with life. So much light also means rapid growth for the rows of lettuce and cabbage in the vegetable patch. They stand side by side, twisting and turning to catch the sun's rays. But juicy cabbage attracts uninvited guests. The cabbage white butterflies need to lay their eggs. 
On a leaf in the nearby branches, a couple sits entwined. The close embrace is part of their mating act, and they can keep at it for hours. The male must deposit a large amount of semen, a full 15% of his body weight. Apart from reproduction, she also uses his semen for nourishment, so she has the strength to lay many large eggs. He has to deposit as much as possible, and that takes time, as much as seven hours if he's young. When they part, she's ready to lay her fragile little eggs, and as a cabbage white, she knows exactly where she prefers to lay them. She found a suitable leaf and laid a cluster of tiny pale yellow eggs. A few days later, the miracle starts unfolding. One of the eggs is moving and bubbling. The process has begun. After a few hours, a newly hatched larva pokes its head out of the shell. He uses his six little legs to squeeze out, making his inside slosh back and forth in his body. After a long struggle, the baby larva finally escapes. And together with his siblings, he regains his strength by feasting on the eggshell. The family dinner is underway. Soon the baby larva will be ready for the main course. Crispy, leafy greens. Cabbage is his favorite plant to munch on. Their big appetites are a problem for the cabbage plants. They may look small and innocent, but before long, they can devour an entire patch. But they have to look over their shoulders because the plants won't stand idly by. They call for reinforcements to defend them. It sends out an alarm call by emitting a special scent, which is picked up by the wasps and sparrows in the garden. They keep a close eye on anything that moves. But the little larva knows to hide. It fully intends to grow up to become an adult butterfly one day. The midsummer sunlight also heats up the garden pond, kickstarting life in the water. Animals mate and plants grow uninhibited. It looks remarkable, but beneath the beauty lurks brutality. Under the water, graceful plants with glittering pearls strewn over them swing to the current. Up close, they resemble little balloons, but they are actually bladders. The plant is called a bladderwort. Around the bladders, microscopic creatures float. Water fleas, miniature snails, and ostracodes dance weightlessly around the plant. But the pretty and graceful bladderwort is a beauty in disguise. They should be wary. The bladderwort is carnivorous. If you look closely, you'll see tiny silhouettes of water creatures struggling for life in the transparent bladders. A single plant can trap up to 150,000 tiny victims at a time. It is violent and impressive. Every bladder is hermetically sealed with a low pressure seal created by expelling air. An innocent little ostracode is tempting fate. It's climbing around on one of the bladders when suddenly it bumps into one of the feelers. The ostracode is sucked into the bladder faster than the eye can see. It doesn't stand a chance. It will be suffocated and slowly dissolved by enzymes. 
the asphyxiation will last several hours. Somewhere else, farther down the pond, little beads have been sprinkled over the green leaves. The small female newt is floating around it. She found a different dragon to mate with. These beads are her fertilized eggs. She places them one by one on the light green plants in the water. With her hind leg, she folds a leaf around the egg to protect it. It's a magical affair. In the days to come, she will lay between 60 and 100 eggs. The first newly hatched dragons are already frolicking around the water. But both in the depths of the pond as well as on land, larger foes are aware of how life is thriving in the water. The grey heron is an odd-looking bird. It's one of a whole host of animals out to end the life of a newly hatched newt. Every second in our gardens is a matter of life and death. If you want to survive, you have to adapt. This furry animal is an expert at hunting both in and out of water. It's an animal we hardly ever see due to its masterful ability to hide. The raccoon dog is at work. A hated animal that everyone would like to get rid of because they breed quickly and kill animals in our backyards. This male is hunting for food. His survival skills are unrivaled. His ancestors would have had to evade fur trappers. His mottled fur is beautiful and unique. It makes him blend into his surroundings. The stripes resemble rays of sunshine in the woods and grass. The raccoon dog has caught a scent. Could it be dinner? He'll take whatever he can get near and doesn't think too highly of himself to eat a dead animal. That's a part of his diet. He's an efficient scavenger in our gardens sinew, bone and cartilage, it all goes down the hatch. This omnivore doesn't mind feathers in his mouth. He's used to eating almost anything, so a full coat of feathers for dessert is definitely an option. Nearby, a family of greylag geese are resting, a much needed respite for Father Goose. He has recently become the father of three fluffy little goslings. His top priority right now is keeping a close eye on the chicks so they don't stray too far from the flock. The three siblings are practicing hard at becoming adults and they're skilled at their favorite pastime, eating from the nourishing lawn. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dad is keeping an eye out so they can eat in peace. The sister is showing good table manners with her mother. But her brother is a glutton and doesn't have the hang of it yet. A whole lawn is too big of a mouthful. This time of year, grey lags begin to molt. They molt to grow a fresh new coat of feathers. Mother and father goose are bound to the place until the new feathers have grown out. That's practical when the chicks require constant supervision from their parents anyway. But there's no danger right now. The gluttonous brother is insatiable and can't get enough of the green grass. But he's not far away, so Dad isn't worried. Suddenly, he realizes that he has strayed from the flock. The gosling got lucky. The raccoon dog was already full. On the cabbage leaves in the vegetable patch, the cabbage white larva is inching his way around. He's reached the teenage phase of his life. Nearby, his big sister, who recently emerged from her chrysalis, is drying her wings, which haven't separated yet. Being a teenage larva doesn't afford you a lot of freedom. Especially when your big sister is constantly nudging at you or has to boast how fast she can find shelter from the rain. Show off. Thankfully, it won't be long before its little brother's turn to be transformed into an adult. Midsummer is the time of transformations where nature's biggest miracles occur. The chubby cabbage white larva is ready his teens are over. He has fastened himself to the stalk. Now it begins. First, the larva creates a chrysalis as a protective overcoat. Finally, he sheds his skin before entrenching himself entirely. He leaves behind his eyes and everything. He finishes up the last part of the chrysalis. Inside, his body will dissolve, but in just a few weeks, a new one will be created in the chrysalis. It will become this magical little wonder. The cabbage white butterfly. bottom of the garden pond, another special creature is waiting to undergo a transformation. Well camouflaged in order to surprise an unsuspecting water creature, because she needs to get fat before her transformation. Right now, she's a larva, fierce and one of the greediest predators in the pond. 
It's hard to imagine that this monster one day will become a beautiful and graceful dragonfly. She breathes through the gills located at the back of her abdomen. She is a glutton and eats all day long. She is a bad swimmer, so she hunts by sneaking up on her prey and waiting quietly until the right moment. When the prey is close, she shoots out her mouth, devouring everything. Between underwater plants, a young newt is on his own tour of the pond. It's developing into an adult newt. It has small front legs and the early stages of a tail and crest. It's moving nimbly around, but fast motions draw attention. The young newt quickly becomes a nourishing meal. The dragonfly larva has struck again. She has to get fat enough to leave the pond and morph into a dragonfly. chicks have emerged. The young lovers have had two lovely yet demanding chicks. They start chirping loudly as soon as mum or dad bring food. One of the chicks is the parent's darling, while the other has to chirp ever louder to get his share. These parents actually do play favourites. One child is always fed first. They're on the run for fresh supplies constantly. They want to ensure the survival of at least one of the chicks. This is how we know Martin's best. Lightning fast, beautiful flyers carrying out the most breakneck ascents and dives. Over the course of a summer, a single Martin can catch 250,000 insects while in the air. Martins normally hunt at around 20 meters off the ground, but today they're much further down. Low flying martins are a sure sign of rain. The insects descend and the martins follow after. It all ends up in the mouths of the chicks who have already been potty trained and make sure not to soil their own nest. female dragonfly larva's makeover. She has climbed onto land and picked a stalk. Here she will undergo her final magical transformation. Over the course of the next four hours, she will shed her larval skin and her ugly outer layer will receive a makeover. She will wait for the sun to dry her skin so she can initiate her metamorphosis. the internal pressure is rising. It's as though an alien has taken over her body. She's very vulnerable sitting there, and she's easy prey if anyone were to spot her.
she tears herself free of her old skin. A painful birth, ripping out her esophagus and intestines. in her life. She's almost two years old, and she has spent most of her life hunting and eating. She hangs face down. Her old body remains as a hard, empty husk. She leaves her old self and waves goodbye to childhood. Now, she has to get used to breathing. She unfurls her wings and dries them in the warm summer wind. Close up, you can see the golden veins pumping out blood to the wings. She has finally transitioned into adulthood, having completed her transformation. All around the pond, dragonflies are emerging with shining eyes. This one sends us its greeting before finally taking off. Three, Two, one, fly. It can control each of its four wings separately from one another, roll into the air and maneuver like a helicopter, backwards and sideways. But they're always in full control. With the wind in their backs, they can reach speeds of 130 kilometers per hour. Once in a while, she lays her eggs by dipping her abdomen into the water surface. Although she's a skilled flyer and hunter, she's still vulnerable. Having reached adulthood, her life is drawing to a close. She only has a few months left to live. And very shortly, she will find a place to die. Maybe on a branch in the garden. It's the peak of midsummer. The flowers give off a pleasant fragrance. Tonight, it's Midsummer's Eve. One of the most magical insects you can find is the glowworm. It's technically a beetle, and this female isn't much to look at in daylight. But when darkness falls, she turns into the luminous queen of the night. She's a master at shaking it and doesn't know the meaning of shame. She practices her twerking in daylight because soon she will be shaking her behind to attract a male with a penchant for twinkling eyes and a posturing posterior. wait for nightfall. It's early evening and a little female hedgehog has just awoken. She's looking for a new shelter. Hedgehogs have many nests all over and now she's looking for another one. 
this time of year, there are lots of suitable dry heaps to hide in. Instinctively, she seeks shelter in the dense brush where it's easier to hide from the world around her. Here, she's safe from the predators in the garden with all the bugs she can eat. Her sensitive snout allows her to pick up everything, insects, predators, and danger. It's her alarm system telling her when to fight back and when to flee. Only unknown and unusual scents will trigger her fright paralysis. But right now, everything is safe and she can wait for dark so she can go hunting. At dusk, the little glowworm has climbed back up to the top of the elderflower. She wants to make herself seen at a distance so an attractive male can find her. But first, darkness has to fall, and that can take its time at the height of summer. At long last, the sun has set completely. She flicks the switch. Her luminous green behind lights up, announcing, come get me. She's like an exotic firefly, twinkling seductively to the male glowworms on this night in June. She's not the only one lighting up the night. The competition is tough. It's like a never-ending light show. The flashing fairy lights make her little green behind look pale, and she can't stand out the way she needs to. No male will see her and fall for her. Instead, they're lured by the artificial lights. The female glowworm is lost in the summer's night. It's Midsummer's Eve. But the female hedgehog doesn't know that. Our gardens also belong to the animals. This time was a lucky escape for the female hedgehog. It's nearly the height of summer. The climate alternates between warm, excruciatingly hot, cascades of rain and intense cloud bursts. In our eyes, many of the creatures in the garden turn into pests. But behind every villain, there's a secret in your backyard. The change of summer will soon be upon us.